Hi, it's Samantha Hartley of Enlightened Marketing and the Profitable Joyful Consulting Podcast. And today I'm really excited to bring to you my first interview. And part of the reason that it's so special is it's actually with my very first online marketing mentor. Uh, when I left my corporate job, I took a year off. And during that year, I was looking for resources about consulting and how to grow a consulting business and how to bring a business to the internet. I just didn't know anything about running a business because I'd never been self-employed before. And one of the early resources that I found was Robert Middleton of Action Plan Marketing. What was most amazing for me about what he did was he spoke just this plain and specific and clear language. And that was such a contrast from the way we spoke at my former employer. Within the marketing department, there was almost a cachet in uh, speaking in ways that no one else could understand. I remember after one annual tour that the chief marketing officer did that they distributed these handouts. It was multiple pages of terminology that was used and what it actually meant. There was actually a little thesaurus or dictionary for the language used within the department. I mean, this is really using language to polarize people, to let them know you are outside and we are inside. You're out of the know and we're in the know. So I, when I left, I began to see how often um, uh, consultants, especially who were deep experts in their field, were using language that was excluding others. Robert is uh, one of the most, uh, the clearest communicators. You're going to hear in my interview with him some of the habits that he has put in place, and especially one specific habit, which I find so remarkable that he has done the entire time he's been in business. And he's also going to share a timeless marketing a client attraction technique that is again so simple so easy to use and so effective you don't have to look for difficult impossible to do marketing techniques in order to grow your business and i've returned to him again and again just to to keep in touch with those fundamentals we've recorded this episode during the pandemic it's the first of my episodes to be recorded during this time so you'll hear some of our references to it. I hope when you're listening to it that things are easier and better and uh, that the specific things that we've been sharing are, are those things that you can put into action right now to help you put you at an advantage so that you can be in an action, you can work from a place of peace and you can still be growing your business. So I want to take a minute to introduce my very first mentor in the online marketing world and really my first true mentor when I began to pursue my consulting career. This is Robert Middleton of Action Plan Marketing, and I discovered Robert, I'm gonna say Robert, it was, I know it was 1999. I'm not sure what, it may have been 2000. But I was reading, I was researching online back in the early days of the internet, what I could do to start and grow my consulting business, just like a lot of our listeners may be doing right this minute. And he had the most informative article on guru.com. And I printed it out and saved it for years. I mean, I may still have a copy of it in my files. It was that valuable to me. So <laughs> that tells you a lot about a content marketing strategy, doesn't it, Robert? That your content will live for years beyond, you know, without you, beyond you. It goes beyond the walls. And I was so inspired by, by what I read. I, I began to study Robert's material and implement it in my own business. And then I began to implement it with my clients. And then years later, he offered a certification program. And I thought, oh, thank goodness, because I'm using his work Already, I might as well, you know, legitimately get connected with and certified by him. So I'm not a big believer in certifications. I don't think you need to have any more credentials than you have as long as you feel confident in what you do and as long as you do a good job for your clients. But his was something that I believed in so much that it's actually the only certification I've ever pursued. And I've never looked back. I've used it with my clients uh, happily and I've, I've helped, it's helped me help so many people with it. Uh, and before I forget, you know, Robert's programs, materials, everything that I learned from him has been re responsible for bringing hundreds of thousands of dollars of revenue into my business, which that as a mentor, that's how it should be. So I'm grateful to, to him for that. And I am so, I so want to honor him and introduce him to you because he's, you know, there you are with us today, still doing what you do. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Robert, what, I want to hear from you a little about how you got started. I mean, that was me leaving my corporate job and going like to the internet to say, what am I doing? How do I get started? I didn't know anyone who was a consultant. I, right. And who turned around, I mean, actually I knew one, literally one human who was a consultant for 
my employer, my former employer. So I, I got some help from her. But beyond that, I didn't know other people who were doing consulting. And so I, when I went on the internet and I found you, what's your origin story? My origin story, well, I discovered at a certain point in my life that I was unemployable. That I like to do my own thing. I like to work by myself. I didn't like to have bosses. And so one day I said, well, let's try something. <laughs> and my, my first thing, I, I call my uh, company Action Plan Systems, and I de developed a time management system and started to do workshops on time management. Great. And then people came to my seminars, and I noticed that the help they needed wasn't so much with time management, but it was with marketing. So I started to jump in and help them with their marketing. Now, I didn't know a hell of a lot back then. This was way back in 19, you know, 86 or 87 or something like that. I started in 84. So I started to read. And over a period of 10 years, I read more than 500 books on marketing and selling and business and personal growth. And so I just became a sponge. So I used to say, I buy wholesale and I sell retail. I would <laughs> read something one day and I'd be teaching it to someone the next day. And I've always been kind of a bootstrap kind of guy. But over the years, I developed systems and ideas and plans and models. In, I think, 1999 or 2000, I put all that together into a manual that I called the InfoGuru Marketing Manual. And a couple of years before, I'd gotten online in 1996, started my email newsletter in 1997, and was writing something every week. And I have now written an article every week for 22 years. Can you believe that? I cannot believe that. I mean, it's amazing. Right. And it's, you know, to, to have a cornerstone habit like that is so, first of all, it's incredibly rare, but it's like, you know, Someone could set their clock by you. It's you are so consistent and regular with that. Every Tuesday morning. So if, if we'll do the unabashed but low key promotion, go to my website. You can sign up for it. Actionplan.club. Actionplan.club. Yes. Definitely. Well, I mean, one should definitely, if you're a consultant or a coach, you should definitely sign up for his newsletter. First of all, if only to see what it looks like when somebody cranks out material every single week that is interesting, compelling. You know, one of my favorite things crank, about crank, you. Cranks it out? Cranks it out? You do crank it out. This is an art form, for God's sake. I spent 25 <laughs> hours per article. Well, yes. No, the really. second. The second reason you should go there is because I think what you're so amazing at is synthesizing like all those books you read. Like, honestly, I don't re want to read 500 books on marketing. Yes. Uh, I feel like I'm going to go to you and you're going to tell me what I need to know from all of those sources. In some cases, I ever get intrigued by something and I want to go read the original material, but rarely because honestly, what I, and what I love about your philosophy of action plan is like, go implement for goodness sake. And so what I've found with your stuff is yep. you're, you really, you have these models, you know, the systems that you talked about. I mean, I got the info guru manual and I just went and started doing it. And like I said, I started doing it with my clients too, because this, it, it was like, it was super simple. And what I love about your writing, this is my third thing I'll say about your writing is it's very, I mean, it is artistic, but it's, it's more like Hemingway than uh, Tolstoy, <laughs> right? It's you write simple, clear, and like people talk. And I teach this right, right. to my clients. Right. Conversational. By the way, here's the manual. Look at that thing. Still have mine, mine is these. like on a shelf <laughs> around I here sold, somewhere. I sold a lot of these. And then, you know, that, that was really a big thing for my business. And, you know, I was in the right place at the right time. And I worked hard and I was lucky. Way back, way back then, when I got on the internet, I'm telling everybody this day just to give you a reality check. Yeah. There was apparently about uh, 250,000 websites when I started out. Yeah. 10 years later, there were 250 million. And you've got to get the enormity of that. That's a thousand times increase. And then eight years after that, now in 2020, there's an eight, crease, eight times increase above that. So compared to where I was 20 years ago, there are 8,000 times more websites. There's 2 billion websites. So now it's a lot harder to be found on the internet. And, and you know, the thing that I found is 
we have to do different things than we were doing 10 years ago. Yeah. It's harder to be found on the internet. We have to be, and a lot of us are going back to old networking skills, connecting with people personally more, as opposed to just waiting for the business to come in through our, through our website, which is an interesting thing. You know, things go in cycles sometimes, yeah. yep. you know. One of the things that I, that I write and talk about a lot is fundamentals and how we return to fundamentals and how fundamentals are things that are true um, and they're true across media. And so networking, you know, we, um, we were making those personal connections, but I might be reaching out and making those personal connections on LinkedIn instead of in the coffee shop or at the chamber meeting. And I think but certain fundamentals are eternal. And, you know, these are, again, concepts that you and I worked on way back when was like, what are marketing strategies? Like there was just a, a, a handful of things that you do and, you know, these buckets and you can put everything else into them. And I think, you know, for you, writing has been such prominent one of those. Uh, how, how are you, you know, since it's not 250,000 anymore, how are you doing, you know, subscriber acquisition and client acquisition uh, in the face of all of the changes and competition right now? Well, I'm still tapping into my list. I mean, people that have been on my list, many people have been on my list for years and years and years. And so I offer programs. The only programs I do now are group programs. I don't work with clients individually. I just find that for groups, they have a synergy to me. So I put out marketing. I say, here's a group. And I do a introductory webinar for the group. And then I talk to people about it. And I fill my programs that way. Great. And, so you know, that's what I do. Well, to be, so to be clear, so you're not doing like advertising on Facebook and you're not doing all of the, all of the hoo-ha rep, all of the other stuff. You're that you're very specific about what you do, which is you get people on your email list and then you market to your email list. Yes. So, so how do you get them on your list? Right on the home page of my website, there's a place to sign up. I just make it very clear and I offer a report and I created a report recently called get more meetings, land more clients. Awesome. So this is a big focus of the last group that I've been doing. You know, I'm not really promoting my website probably nearly as much as I need to, as I would like to do. It's it's harder now, you yeah. know, and so but still people it's out there, people hear it and I get subscribers every day anyway. Nice. Nice. So nevertheless. But yeah. This whole thing of getting more meetings has been a big breakthrough for a lot of people. It's, it's, let me tell you a little story. I, uh, a few months ago, I read a article called 50 coffees and 50 coffees was an article that said from a guy that said, anytime I want to have something happen in my business, I call up 50 of my connections and say, I'd like to meet you for coffee for 20 minutes. And in that meeting, we share ideas, insights, resources, and connections. And it always leads me to where I want to go, whether right. it's through clients or a yep. plan or a strategy or something. And, you know, I'm doing this interview right now because I contacted Samantha through my personal 50 coffees thing. So, so, you know, there's in some ways when you have a big list and, you know, a lot of people, they know you, but you've never really had a conversation with most of these when you have thousands and thousands of people on a list. So I'm looking through my contacts. I was actually just looking through LinkedIn and there you were on LinkedIn. Yep. And so I said, Hey, Samantha, how you doing? <laughs> and you know, it's easier to get meetings than you think. Now it's harder to get meetings with perfect prospects ready to buy, Yeah. but getting meetings with, with oh, past clients, close business associates, people like that is not so hard. And those can lead you to, oh, you ought to be talking to so-and-so. That's a person who's a great connector. I know someone that might need your services. And so I started to teach this to, to people in my class recently. And an amazing thing happened. I'm almost embarrassed to say. People started to get better results in their marketing from anything that I've ever done in 35 years. No kidding. Just by right. meeting with people, yep. not fancy stuff and long written things and complicated plans, just reaching out. So for instance, a guy who is, you might know him, his name is um, Al Ritter. He's an amazing guy. He's a 78 year old marketing management consultant who's also runs triathlons. Oh my gosh. <laughs> amazing guy. 
So he said, Robert, what should I do? I said, well, send an email out to your past clients. So he did to 11 clients for a new service that he's offering. Six got back to them within a day or so. And within two weeks, he had two new clients paying him really, really with a really big project. Yeah. And so we're devising all kinds of ways to simply get meetings with people and, and discovering that it's, it's not a complicated, long, shaggy dog story kind of email. It's sort of like, hey, I've been thinking about you. I'll give you the formula. I've been thinking about you. You know what you have been thinking about you or, or you wouldn't, even if it was only for a moment, I've been thinking about you and we haven't talked in a long time. I wonder how you're doing now these days in the days of coronavirus, this is even better. How are you handling True. things with coronavirus right yeah. now? Hope you're okay. Hey, I'd love to catch up with you and chat. Maybe there's some ways we could help each other. That basic format gets an extraordinarily high response. Mm -hmm. Now, I think, and some people are also testing this on LinkedIn, you connect with somebody and you have a little exchange, but you can have an exchange with someone, hey, I saw your profile, what you're doing is interesting. How are you doing right now with, in coronavirus? How's your business going? Don't ask for a meeting yet, but if they respond and you get a conversation, then you might say, hey, you know, I'd love to chat with you. Maybe we can help each other in some way. You know, that phrase, yep. maybe we can help each other, because when I say, maybe I can help you, oh, yeah. I don't need any help. Right. Or maybe you, you can, can help, help me. That's, nobody wants to hear that. But yes, maybe but we can help each other. Maybe we can help each other. It's a very mutual thing. Yeah. So, so that's what I'm doing on the, you know, I'm sharing an idea. They're sharing an idea. There's a connection, an idea, a resource, a possibility. Mm -hmm. And if you really think of it, the currency of marketing, the currency of business is conversations. No conversations, no business. Now, sometimes those conversations are in a written format, of course. Yeah. And there's conversations back and forth by email and by Facebook and LinkedIn, da, da, da. but it's all conversations. And so ultimately in marketing, we've got to get good at having simple conversations. And if no one will meet with you, your business, you know, it's just yeah. Dries dead up. in the water. Yep. So better to talk to anybody than nobody because they can say someone else and connect. And the other thing is I, I make the joke these days, I'm meeting with a client and I'm sharing some ideas with him, you know, and I always get, I don't know where the ideas come from, but I've studied so much stuff and done so many things that when the situation is like this, I'd say, I've got an idea for you and we roll it out. And as I'm doing that, I say, I should do that. <laughs> I should do that idea sometimes. Uh -huh. sometimes. And I say, you know, the main purpose of meeting for my clients is to get my, get ideas of myself. Cause I always get new ideas. So I just shared an idea with a client the other day and I said, Oh, why should I do that? And so then I did it. <laughs> Good. And then the next client I met, I shared the idea with her and she said, I'm going to do that too. So, so ideas can become viral person to person. If we get excited about something, if it's a good idea, share it. Here's something you could try. So this 50 coffees idea has become kind of viral. I would suggest you go to Google and put 50 coffees. Mm -hmm. and you, can, you can use five zero coffees or F-I-F-T-Y coffees because there's actually two good articles out there about it. They're both a little different. One's a guy in England, I think. The other guy's in the U.S. Michael Elling, E-H-L-I-N-G wrote the one and the other one was by Peter Thompson. Those articles were so catalytic to ev everybody read it and went, wow, I could do this. It was really exciting. So, you know, obviously it's not the only marketing thing you should do, but it's a, I think it should be a big piece of almost any professional service businesses, marketing strategy, get more meetings. And, you know, right now everybody wants to talk. And there's something to talk about right now. How are you doing with the pandemic? How's your business? You know, people say, well, all my, can, all my um, speaking engagements got canceled. All right. my programs got canceled. And I say, okay, so let's talk about how we can go virtual. How can you offer something to them? And that stuff is happening. It won't happen like that. But right now, since there's no other way to do business except virtual, 
if you're on top of it and you have ideas and you can share things and do a webinar or whatever, you can start to make things happen. So I started to do these, um, these webinars called Going Radically Virtual in the Time of Coronavirus. Love Last it. week we had 100 people on the call. Yep. And we talked about what you can do and we talked about who you need to be right now. Mm. You know, be of service. Yes. Be someone who's an inspiration. Be someone who's trying to uplift things and be a solution. And then people started to share and you know who they have to be and it was really inspiring and also really moving and then we looked at well what can you do what are the different things you can do to connect with people virtually and and really get things moving and you know it's not just happening with me you see how many emails did you get just today about here's what we're doing with coronavirus right. we're putting on this or we're doing a pre this yeah i just got two really inspiring ones for webinars that are doing something similar to mine the only thing is I'm so booked up, I can't attend them, but I signed up anyway so I can listen to the recording. I want to know yeah. what people are doing right now and how we manage things and how we go through this transition. Right. Because we've got to survive this transition. Mm -hmm. You can't just lay back and say, well, I am screwed. It's all over. Yeah. You've got but to find a way. This isn't your first crisis in business. I mean, you went through the 2008, 2009 downturn like all the rest of us did. And, you know, possibly the, the, you know, after 9-11, there was also a lot of crisis. So when you look at this and you think about the best way for everyone to get through it, you know, there are people out there who have events businesses. There are people out there who have travel related businesses. There are, uh, you know, those who their clients just got freaked out and said, I can't, I can't do this anymore. So in, in, so there are extreme cases. And then there are cases like mine where, you know, knock on wood, my business has not really been affected because my, I have long-term engagements with my clients and they are working with clients who are still working. And so um, yeah, nothing yeah. At, at this point has changed. I don't know about two months from now. We'll see. But I, I do have the perspective of going through 2008 and 2009 and there was a lot of constriction and we, you know, here we are today with our businesses. Some of my clients who are corporate consultants go into these, you know, ivory towers and they're teaching things like how to have conversations. So, you know, in um, some of the, my other circles, not non-work circles, uh, you will be in meetings where you have a talking stick or a talking rock and you pass it around as you have conversations. And I'm noticing kind of that kind of thing appearing in, in corporate where it's like, I feel like a talking stick, it really empowers the person who's talking, but it also sends a message of like, when someone has the rock, you don't talk, you know, which is kind of a, an important thing to bring in. Mm -hmm. Giving feedback, um, you know, just the basics of how to bridge divides uh, and things like that. And when I hear the 50 conversations, I, I hear about that. When we hear about like marketing and surviving as a business in a time of crisis, it's like, where, what are the fundamentals? Let's figure this out. As you're saying, if, if I'm in, in concerned about my business right now, one of the things that's available to me is 50 conversations. I can call 50 people I know. You know, one of the things I wrote about this um, was uh, that you don't have to have your act together. You can be honest with people. I mean, I think it's important to, you know, to put on your, your most professional hat when you're doing things, but you can say, gosh, I don't know. I'm feeling kind of uncertain about my business. All of, all of the events were canceled. And then again, that, as you're saying, that gives that person the opportunity to either say, wow, that sounds really difficult, or maybe they have ideas and they can say, well, have you thought about doing it virtually? And, you know, just giving, um, giving and receiving, I think is also really important in this time. Absolutely. And it's something that when you're, you know, those coffee meetings that you're talking about, it is that, you know, helping each other kind of thing. And I've, I mean, I did, I think I did 75 of them last year with new LinkedIn connections. And I just met the coolest people and the things that I'm talking about right now, like realizing the trend of move towards fundamentals, realizing, you know, most of them were women consultants and seeing kind of what their concerns were that were, you know, that were unique to all consultants, but then the ones that were very specific to women consultants. So I, I think calling 50 people also is kind of market research. You'd certainly learn a lot about what's yeah. going on out there. And you I think in this this uh, pivoting during the, this pandemic, I think pivoting in any crisis, it's going to help you to be more sustainable long-term. You know, you don't need a crisis just to get creative about how to make sure your business is sustainable. 
Yeah, but the creativity is really kicking in these days. You know, Isn't something it? I've been saying to people, the two worst words in the English language are marketing and selling. <laughs> they have such negative connotations and bring up so much stuff for so many people, especially yeah. small business owners. And I, I suggest we use a new word called building business relationships. That's three words, but yeah. it's really what it's about. It's connecting people. It's talking with them. It's seeing how they can help you and vice versa and building a network. You know, when I started my business, I was in San Francisco and I joined the Chamber of Commerce and I joined a leads group and I started putting on events. I was networking guy, you know, yeah. I was, uh, this was pre-internet, if you can even re imagine that. And mm -hmm. I did postcard mailings and I sent them out and I invited people to come to my office in downtown San Francisco where we had a conference room and we did introductory programs. We did networking lunches. I'm doing exactly the same thing now. It's just that I'm doing it virtually. I'm getting yep. people together. I'm talking to people. Yep. And and also that, that starts to qualify five people as prospects. Yeah. You remember my marketing ball where I talk about I affiliation, sure familiarity, information, and experience? That's building relationships. Yeah. You know, affiliation is just the people you know in your network, in your organizations, in whatever, people on LinkedIn, all those people you have an affiliation with. Familiarity is you start to show up. You have content. You're connecting with people. You share stuff. So you have more visibility than information. You know, so many people know you, but really don't know much about you or what you do. So do you have good information on your website? Do you have a PDF executive summary that tells really clearly what you're about? Yeah. And so, you know, we've got to get content. But then the, the most powerful one is give people an experience of you. And you get an experience in a video in a recording, in a yeah. webinar, something like that. So they, so people have now had an experience of me and either they hate me, absolutely, or they like me. Yeah. <laughs> Please like me. The only two choices. And when you give people an experience and you resonate with someone, then they want to find out more and they get on your list. And, you know, there might be someone that connects with me now that, gets on my list or comes to one of my webinars and tells somebody about me and it just spreads the word. So I think that's the, an important thing to do now, find a way to give experiences. What I love so much about it is yes, I a hundred percent agree that this is, I, I would refer again to the fundamentals that we should always be connecting in business. And what this time has shown us, it's the steroids piece you're talking about. It's like now more than ever. And what I think is so interesting is kind of the paradox of we all went, we we're forced to go inside. We've all isolated. And so many people are like yearning for that connection. And so I think that when we, when we lived our normal lives where we had all these distractions and things like that, and you have flights and events and things that are kind of pulling you off track, we've had a lot of time to sit at home base and just think about things. And we're feeling that call to connect with other people. We're feeling like, wow, we're all in yeah. this together. And exactly. I think that's a fabulous time to reach out. Uh, the yes. other thing that I really love about what you said is coming together with, with other people who have these ideas. Like you'll, one of the things that came to me for this time was to complete things. You're home, you're not distracted. Why don't you complete some stuff that has been lingering and taking a long time to complete? And I thought that's your a great website, thing. like your whatever. Yeah. Exactly. Your website, that new lead magnet or white paper that you wanted to, to do, or yeah. you've always been wanting to do like some LinkedIn outreach. So how about do it now? And what I've been telling people yes. during this time is we have, people are crying out for leadership. They really want to see leadership. And, and as I was yes. saying earlier, when you were talking about all the marketing books and how you distilled them for your audience, I, I didn't want to read all that stuff. I wanted to hear it from you. I trust you. Tell me what I need to know. Synthesize these 500 books for me. And yeah. nowadays, I think we are looking to our leaders of our audiences. So whether it's, you know, someone is human resources consultant, maybe someone's a remote work consultant. That's very timely right now. What about culture? My clients who are IT consultants right now is an amazing time to, to lead your people. And I'm like, for hundred percent, be visible, like get out there on a daily basis and be visible with a little bit of content or a little bit of an email, something, be visible with your people um, and, and help them with whatever you have. And so I love the idea that you've done webinars, that you're emailing about it, that you're, you're also bringing together smart people to share their ideas with your audience. That to me is leadership 
of our, of our tribe and then also for your clients. I've had a couple people who are in various aspects of my life, you know, financial advisors and, you know, other kinds of uh, professionals who haven't said a thing. And I'm like, hello, <laughs> like my personal trainer has been in touch more than certain other professionals have been. And I'm like, right, right. I, I feel like there's a deterrent. People are like, oh, I'm, I could, I can't possibly read another COVID-19 email right now. And I'm like, I know, but I want to read the one from you. Yes. You know what I mean? Just because you're sick of it doesn't mean that your people don't want to hear from you. Yes. You know, I send an email to my investment company and I invest in, in real estate in the Midwest, multi-unit apartment building, a great company in Santa Cruz here. And I said, I haven't heard from you guys. And she said, you know, we're a little behind, but we're on it. And I got the most amazing freaking email today. Good. That goes into great deal to explain what they're doing. And, you know, and Good. that's the kind of thing they would do. They were just a little behind perhaps, yeah. but you know, people do want to hear from you. Yeah. And so what? Not 100% of people are going to jump up and down and call you. Yeah. Don't worry about it. You don't have to get 100% response in marketing, but they'll appreciate it. And yeah. look, if you send out emails, make them really personal. Make them authentically you. Don't make them cold and impersonal. Maybe even include a little tiny bit of humor. You know, like me being on the moon, stuff like that. That's yeah. appropriate right now. Yeah, there is going to be a ridiculous amount of COVID-19 humor coming. There will be movies about this. There will be books written about this. There's, uh, there's all kinds of stuff. There will be comedy acts about this, I promise you. And we have to, that helps because yeah. if we're in doom and gloom. You know, often the first thing I say when somebody gets on, on a call with me, I say, I say, how are you doing with the zombie apocalypse right now? <laughs> yeah. I say, you laughed. Right, of course. <laughs> and and, it, and it's, a, it's about the closest thing we know to a zombie apocalypse. Oh, it, it sure is. Yeah. I'm, I'm doing quarantine baking, like apparently half of Twitter. Quarantine baking. That's yes. a thing, right? It's yes. totally a thing, it turns out. I thought it was just me. Again, a, an experience Why of one, oneness and what is otherwise a crisis. To me, an e-zine or a newsletter is such, a, is such an intimate medium because you're coming into someone's inbox. And I would say, you know, if I hold up my phone, I'm, it's like I'm right, reading it right here. Uh, it's, you know, you're really connecting with someone in their home, in their workplace, and they're and reading that and they're thinking, you know, they're identifying with what you're writing. And that to me is also part of the persuasive power of it, Robert, is you're like so you're intimately connecting with, and in your case, you know, thousands and thousands of subscribers. Exactly. And so, yeah, the potential for it is great. And, you know, if you have a list of thousands and thousands of people, you can do things you can't with a list of 50 people, obviously. Right. But again, it's better than nothing and it will grow over time. You know, we want to start perfect. We wanted to, uh, you know, it's like I've seen people that have taken forever, a year to get going. And it's like, you can start tomorrow. Do, do a, just do a distribution list of 10 of your best clients uh, in, um, in Gmail, you know, Gmail, you can create lists and you can create labels for those lists or tags. And then you just send it to all those people. Start with that. All right. Later on, get a email management program like a Weber or MailChimp or something sure. like that. You could start with a free version of one of those even just to kind of learn the ropes. But yeah, exactly. what's most important is to do it. Um, you know, yeah. I've always, I, again, I love the name Action Plan from the very first time I heard it. And I think what's so important, Robert, is that you have always had a bias for action and implementation and that you've described the, your, your clients. You know, I hear so many success stories from them. I mean, I'm a living success story, but I hear other success stories. One of the things that I thought was really interesting was um, how many of them, uh, years ago, you had said this, that they have um, regular uh, workout or physical fitness programs. Can you just talk for a minute about that kind of correlation? It, it, it comes down to doing simple things in a repeated kind of way. So for instance, my email newsletter, I do it every Monday. And I do something else every Monday. I do not meet clients on Monday. Uh -huh. So I have a day, you know, I'm catching up, I'm doing email, I'm coming up with creative ideas and I'm writing my email newsletter. And it's almost like I'm not working. <laughs> it's not hard. And then the other days I'm, my, my calendar is packed. So it's like when you go to the gym, you shouldn't go randomly. You should go Tuesday, you know, Wednesday, yeah. Well, whatever, Monday, Wednesday, yeah. and 
Friday at 6 p.m. And then you don't have to think about it. See, I don't have to think about whether or not I'm going to write something. It's, it's Marketing Monday, Newsletter Day. It's just that's what I do on that day, and therefore it's not hard. I open up a document. Sometimes I've been thinking about it, and I have some ideas. Sometimes I don't. You know, as we've had this conversation, I'm already thinking of the one yep. for the next Monday, sure. actually, if yeah. we could talk about. And then by the time I get there, I'm, I'm ready to go. And it's true for, for anything like that. Well, and you also prime your brain to deliver you those ideas on, a, an, on an ongoing basis. And as you're saying, like you're getting ideas as we're talking. I do the same thing. I'm getting ideas as we're talking. I will, yeah. uh, on a video call, I'll make little notes like on a silly thing like that. And then I'll right. transcribe those into a document where I track all my blog topics or e uh, e-zine topics or organic right. post topics, what, whatever that is. I'll get them in there. And then I rotate that content. I don't know if this is something that you do, but I'll take something that was on my LinkedIn, especially if it performed well, I'll put that in my Facebook group and then I'll move that onto my personal page. And then I'll, if it was went really well, I'll send that to my email newsletter. So somebody may see that more than one time. I'm and wrong with that. No, exactly. And then uh, if it performed well, and uh, I think it's worth them seeing it again. And, uh, you know, I see people doing that and I never have a problem with it. I'm like, oh yeah, that one, I'm going to read that again. Or, oh yeah, I read that. Thanks. And, uh, and that, you know, that helps us to, to make the most of that content, but it also, uh, you know, I, I'm constantly getting those ideas, tracking those ideas and then implementing those ideas in, in some kind of writing form. For uh, it, just as a reminder, the, the way to get your emails and to get on your list is to go to actionplan.club. Yes. C-L-U-B. Just, just scroll down and you'll see the, the report I'm giving away. Get more um, meetings. Get more yep meetings land more clients and you'll Love get it. that report and you'll get on my list and you'll be mm -hmm. on my list for the rest of your life until you opt out <laughs> and, and, and and then I'll, be, I'll inform you of the webinars and stuff that i'm doing and stuff like that and, sounds uh, awesome great I well it's been yeah. so great to talk with you today robert i mean I, I i it's you know i i get to be just like i sincerely love talking with you and i sincerely uh learn things every time and feel excited just about the concrete specific things that I can go implement. So thank you so thank much you. for your time today. And I, I encourage everyone to go and uh, stay in touch with you. Thanks for watching. Please like this video, subscribe to the channel and click the bell to get video updates. Thanks.